From carrying part of the first rocket on a bicycle to finding water on the moon, creating history by launching 104 satellites to executing Mars Orbiter mission Mangalyaan in one go at a fraction of cost, Indian Space Research Organization ISRO has come a long way since its inception and has been pioneering a space mission with untiring zeal. ISRO has marked itself on the global map and made the world know that it can create wonders. Following its incredible success over there, it is worthwhile to know its journey, challenges, failures, and its determination to overcome them. In India, space research began in 1920s with the studies conducted by scientists like S. K. Mitra, C. V. Raman, and Meghnath Saha. During the 1940s and 50s, space-related activities started gaining attention nationwide. India got independence in 1947. Long years ago, we made a tryst with destiny. And now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge, not only or in full measure, but very substantially. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. After the independence of India, Vikram Sarabhai, also known as the founding father of Indian Space Programme, saw a lot of potential in rocket science and understood the need of a space program for the development of the country. Sarabhi convinced the government that India needed to have its own space program. In 1961, Jawaharlal Nehru put a space research under the ambit of Department of Atomic Energy, which was founded and headed by veteran nuclear scientist Humbi Jahangir Bhabha. Bhabha created the Indian National Committee for Space Research in Kospar in February 1962 with Vikram Sarabhai as its chairman. The chief mandate of the INCOSPAR was to formulate India's space program. The responsibility of DAE related to space research were then taken up by this committee. INCOSPAR was the part of Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, which was led by MGK Menon. The committee decided to establish Thumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Station at Thumba near Tiruvananthapuram at India's southern tip. It was chosen as a spaceport to launch rocket because of its proximity to magnetic equator of the planet which is perfectly suitable for conducting low altitude ionospheric and upper atmosphere studies. On 21st September 1963, the first sounding rocket named Nike Apache launched from Thumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Station kick-starting the Indian space program. The rocket was made at NASA which was assembled in Mary Magdalene Church while the senior institution from the France provided the equipment for sodium vapor experiment. This was a proud moment for India. TRS was renamed as Vikram Sarabhai Space Center in honor of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. We have a constant endeavor in the years to come to provide the peaceful uses of outer space for the real problems of this nation. Indian Space Research Organization formed in 1969 superseded the erstwhile INCOSPAR. The prime objective of ISRO is to develop a space technology and its application for various national needs. In 1967, ISRO started launching series of our own sounding rocket named Rohini from DRLS. The Department of Space and the Space Commission were set up in 1972 and the ISRO was brought under the Department of Space on 1st June 1972. On 19 April 1975, the rocket thruster fired to launch India's first indigenous satellite. It was named Arabat. The satellite shared its name with great Indian ancient astronomer and mathematician Arabat. Names like Maitri and Jawahar were contending as well. Prime Minister Indira Gandhi chose the name Arabat. It was launched on the Soviet Cosmos 3M rocket even though it was entirely designed and fabricated in India. In 1972, the Space Cooperation Agreement between India and Soviet Union, directed by Ivar Rao, permitted the USSR to use Indian ports for tracking ship and launching vessels in return of launching India's satellite. The Arabat launch was successful at a time when leading space power had little faith in, in India's chance to produce an indigenous satellite. The satellite re-entered the Earth atmosphere on 11 February 1992. It was tracked for 17 years before the orbital life ended. In 1975, satellite instructional television experiment 
launched in India by ISRO and NASA. The project made informational television program to the ruler India. The experiment major goal was to assist India to obtain technical expertise in satellite communication while also educating the country's economically underprivileged and uneducated populace on a variety of topics through satellite broadcast. The experiment lasted a year from 1st August 1975 to 31st July 1976 included nearly more than 2400 villages of six Indian states and territories. For the period of the experiment NASA ATS-6 satellite was positioned above the India which aired the television show which were produced by All India Radio. Various international organizations including the UNDP, UNICEF, UNESCO and ITU supported the initiative. The initiative demonstrated that how India might utilize cutting edge technology to meet nation's socio-economic requirement. Prior to site, terrestrial transmission of television transmission was the main focus. But site demonstrated that how India could employ cutting edge technology to meet the demand of its socio-economic system. As a result, satellite transmission became more important in India. ISRO also started making plan for national satellite network system. The project was a success since it significantly contributed to the development of India's own satellite program, INSAT. Indian national satellite system was launched in 1982 by ISRO after a number of technical tests. The launch of INSAT 1B in August 1983 marked the beginning of Indian national satellite system. We have paid NASA 7 million pounds. Already it's 36,000 kilometers above India, sending back its first signal. INSAT 1A was the first satellite launched by ISRO in April 1982 but could not fulfill the mission. INSAT is a series of multi-purpose geostationary satellites which support telecommunication, broadcasting, meteorology, search and rescue activities. Commissioned in 1983, it is the largest domestic communication satellite system in the Indo-Pacific region. National satellite system, INSAT, seeks to provide broadcasting, telecommunication and meteorological data collection. The INSAT system brought a revolution in India's telecommunication, meteorology, TV and radio broadcasting sector. It made it possible for modern telecommunications and TV to quickly spread over the remote areas and offshore islands. ये आकाशवाणी है। अब आप रामानुज प्रसाद सिंह से समाचार सुनिए। Thanks to Insat. TV signals are now available in even the most remote and far-flung areas of the country. A few of the insets are equipped with meteorological observational and data-relay devices for the provision of meteorological services. Kalpana 1 was the first dedicated meteorological satellite. 11 of the 24 satellites are deployed as a part of inset program are still in operational. The use of satellite for an education remains the main focus for Indian space program. The first satellite ever created only to serve education was launched by India in September 2004 under the name of EduSat also known as GSat city meet the demand for an interactive satellite based distance education system for India The 6 KU band transponders of GSat 3 will allow five spot beams and one national beam One extended C band transponder would provide a national beam The ground segment in each beam will consist of a hub, 6 to 10 teaching ends, and a large number of interactive and receive only terminals. India's epos making fast broadband network on EduSat for schools Kite Victors inaugurated by APJ Abdul Kalam, the president of India on 28 July 2005 in Tiruvananthapuram. The students from the remote centers and in the studio will interact with the president The GSAT satellites are built by India on its own and are utilized for digital audio, data and video transmission for both military and civilian uses. Satellites don't reach space on their own but they have to be carried by launch vehicles or rocket. The rocket uses powerful propulsion system that generate huge amount of energy that overcome the earth's gravitational pull to carry the heavy objects such as satellite into space. Once the payload or satellite reach the desired orbit, they are expelled from the rocket. The power produced, the weight carrying capabilities and the distance that each launch vehicle go in space are the key difference between them. ISRO is two launch vehicle at present, GSLV and PSLV, but these also have several variants. The GSLV are much more powerful rocket and meant to be carried heavier satellite deeper into space. ISRO first rocket was simply called SLV, satellite launch vehicle. Okay. 
it followed up with augmented satellite launch vehicle ASLV. These two rockets could carry small satellites that weight up to 150 kg in low Earth orbits. ISRO used the ASLV till early 1990s before the PSLV, which was first launched in 1994, became the Space Research Agency main rocket. Today, PSLV is vastly improved and more powerful than the previous one used in 1990s. With 39 continuously successful mission till June 2017, PSLV had established itself as India's dependable and versatile workhorse launch vehicle after its first successful launch in October 1994. The vehicle launched 209 foreign customer satellite and 48 Indian spacecraft between 1994 and 2017. ISRO sets a global record on 15 February 2017 by successfully launching most number of satellites on a single rocket. A record-breaking 104 satellites were launched and successfully placed in a sun-synchronous orbit by PSLV C-37. As usual for PSLV. The Falcon 9 rocket operated by Elon Musk SpaceX broke the most number of satellite launch by a single rocket by carrying as many as 143 payloads into orbit. Furthermore, the PSLV has launched two successful major missions, Chandrayaan-1 in 2008 and the Mars Orbiter mission Mangalyaan in 2013. The idea of Indian first scientific mission to the moon was first raised in 1999 during the meeting of Indian Academy of Science. The Astronautical Society of India carry forwarded the idea. Soon after that, ISRO set up a National Lunar Task Force which concluded that ISRO has the technical expertise to carry out an Indian mission to the moon. On 56th Independence Day in 2003, Prime Minister Atal Bihari Bajpay announced India's median unmanned moon mission Chandrayaan-1. Chandrama पर अपना अंतरिक्ष यान भेजेगा। इसका नाम होगा चंद्रयान प्रथम। As a country indigenously developed technology to explore the moon, Chandrayaan-1 gave major boost to Indian space program. Chandrayaan-1 was India's first lunar mission launched from Sri Harikota in Andhra Pradesh on 22 October 2008. It's a historic moment as far as India is concerned. We have started our journey to the moon. And the first leg of the journey has gone perfectly well. It was operated for at least 312 days till 29 August 2009, doing more than 3,400 lunar orbits. On 8 November 2008, the spacecraft broke away from Earth's gravitational field and entered into lunar orbit. This was the historical day as it was the first time an any Indian built spacecraft entered into Moon's orbit. When the Moon impact probe Painted on Indian trickler landed on the lunar surface on 14 November 2008, India became the fourth country to do so. It took the probe 25 minutes to descend 100 km from Chandrayaan-1 to hit the moon. An important discovery of the mission is the discovery of water traces on the moon's surface, which represents something breakthrough in international space science. Additionally, the spacecraft detected magnesium, aluminium, silicon on the moon's surface as well as water ice on its north polar region. On 24 September 2014, India made history by being the first Asian nation to reach Martian orbit and the first nation in the world to do so in first attempt. The excitement among all these scientists, they are all having beaming faces, smiles from year to year and congratulating each other on the performance of this much awaited event, the Mars Orbit Insertion. You can imagine the Mars Orbiter mission near the Mars planet after this Mars Orbit Insertion maneuver. While the probe was launched from Sri Harikota, Andhra Pradesh on 5 November 2013, it took 296 days to leave Earth's orbit. With this achievement, ISRO became the fourth space agency to achieve such a feat after NASA, the European Space Agency and Roscosmos. The mission's objective included exploring the Martian atmosphere and its elements such as the level of methane and carbon dioxide as well as creating necessary technology to run interplanetary missions. In addition, the MOM probe was developed to study the topography, solar wind impacts, 
surface characteristics, minerals, and radiation on Mars. Perhaps the most astonishing aspect of the craft accomplishment is that it was created solely on an indigenous Indian technology and too fairly on a low budget. The entire operation cost around $74 million. It is by far the most affordable, successful interplanetary mission ever undertaken. On 22 July 2019, ISRO launched GSLV Mark 3 M1 on its voyage to the moon from the second launch pad at the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Andhra Pradesh. After Chandrayaan 1, Chandrayaan 2 was the second lunar exploration project by Indian Space Research Organization. It consists of a lunar orbiter as well as Vikram lander and Pragyan lunar rover, all of which then were developed in India. The primary scientific goal was to map and investigate the difference in lunar surface composition as well as location and availability of lunar water. The spacecraft entered the moon's orbit on 20 August 2019 and started orbital positioning maneuvers for Vikram lander's touchdown. The lander and rover were expected to land on the near side of the moon of the south polar area at a latitude of 70 degrees south on 6 September 2019 and perform scientific experiments for one lunar day which equals to two Earth weeks. A successful soft landing would have made India the fourth country after the Soviet Union, USA and China to do so. However, the lander crashed when it deviated from its intended trajectory while attempting to land. An altitude of almost lander four descent was as planned and normal performance was observed up to an altitude of 2.1 km. Subsequently, the communications from the lander to ground station was lost. The data is being analyzed. The GSLV was used for Chandrayaan 2 mission and ISRO plans to use it for Gaganyaan. With its Mark 3 version, it can carry satellites that weigh up to 4000 kg in geosynchronous transfer orbit located nearly 36,000 km above the Earth's surface. It can also take 10,000 kg satellites into low Earth orbits. With the Mark 3 version, ISRO is now self-sufficient when it's come to satellite launches. The GSLV Mark II, which is currently in operation, is a fourth-generation launch vehicle and it is a three-stage launch vehicle. The first vehicle was launched in 2001. GSLV is a three-stage launch vehicle with solid, liquid and cryogenic stage. After the indigenous cryogenic upper stage failed in 2010, it took the four years to successfully design new cryogenic engines for the ISRO scientist. But the overall development did not happen overnight. US sanctions and false espionage case stymied the development of indigenous cryogenic engine and building of powerful rockets. ISRO began experimenting with cryo engine back in the 80s. To gain on hands-on experience with cryofuel and technology, a small one-ton pressure-fed cryo engine was developed in 1986. General Dynamics of the USA offered their RLTL engine in 1988 for $801 million without technology transfer, while Ariana Space offered its HM7 engine for $1,200 million in 1989 with technology transfer. Since both deals were expensive, they did not go through. In 1991, Glaf Cosmos of the USSR offered two cryogenic engines with technology transfer at an attractive price. ISO decided to buy this to speed up the GSLV project. In 1992, United States, under the administration of President George H. W. Bush, imposed sanction on ISRO and prohibited USSR from providing cryogenic engine technology on the grounds that the agreement violated MTCR, Missile Technology Control Regime. Just when a deal was ready to be finalized with Glaf Cosmos, US crippled India's cryogenic engine program. India also pointed that American had offered them same technology and had raised no objection during the period of 1988 to 1992 when the agreements were in place. India and Russia have said that the cryogenic engine technology is utilized only for research purpose and not intended for missiles. Russia, which was still recovering from the fall of USSR, gave up in US pressure and cancelled the deal in 1993. Under the revised Russia-India agreement in January 1994, Moscow agreed to transfer three engines later renegotiated to seven KVD-1 engines without transfer of technology to India. During this time, the false ISRO espionage conspiracy involving ISRO scientist Nambi Narayan, who was in charge of cryogenic division at that time, also took place. In 1994, he was arrested on the charge of espionage. The CBI dropped the allegation against him in 1996 and the Supreme Court of India ruled him innocent in 1998. GSLV D1 was the first developmental flight in 18 April 2001 featuring Russian cryogenic engine KBD1.
In 2010, two launches of second generation GSLV rockets, one having Russian engine and other having indigenous engine, ended in failures. No organization has ever mastered rocketry without experiencing failures, not even ISRO. However, there is a lesson to be learned from every setback and this is the key to success. The big success came in 2014 with the experimental flight of third generation GSLV Mark III containing an indigenous cryogenic engine. के प्रज्वलन के पश्चात सेंट्रल कोर जो थी सॉलिड इंजन वो भी नाइट कर दिया गया है और ये पच्चे पड़े यहाँ सीधा आकाश की ओर अपने अनुमानित पथ पर कैन सी द मैजिस्टिक लिफ्ट ऑफ ऑफ जीएसएलवी आफ्टर कंफर्मिंग द एल फोर्टी परफॉर्मेंस एस वन थर्टी नाइन इज इग्नाइटेड द व्हीकल गोइंग मैजिस्टिकली � Congratulations of command is issued and uh, 180 by 36,000 kilometer exactly as as exactly as uh, predicted. बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण चार क्रायोजेनिक अप्रेस्टेज को बंद कर दिया गया है हम लोग 1024 Ever since the cancellation of original Russian deal, ISRO got down to developing cryogenic technology on its own at Liquid Propulsion System Center at Tiruvananthapuram. It took more than a decade to build that engine and success did not come easily. Two decades later, the US Space Agency NASA had joined hands with ISRO to co-develop the world's most expensive Earth imaging satellite that will cost the two countries over $1.5 billion. The irony is GSLV, which is likely to place NASA ISRO synthetic aperture radar Nissan satellites into orbit, is the same rocket for whose cryogenic engine the US put sanctions on in India. Leaving behind the past, ISRO and NASA are building 2200 kg Nissan satellite, which will provide an advanced image of the Earth. The mission aims to observe and measure some of the planet complex process, including ecosystem disturbance, ice sheet collapse, and natural hazards. Based on the experiences gained by the previous missions and technology built for them, ISRO plan more mission to explore inner solar system such as Sukhryan Venus Orbiter and Aditya L1. A second Mangalyan launch is also planned with an upgraded orbiter and scientific instrument. One of the most exciting mission of ISRO is Gaganyaan, which will be the first manned spacecraft mission of ISRO. In order to launch Gaganyaan, ISRO developing indigenously a human-aided launch vehicle, crew escape system, habitable orbital module, and a life support system. The first Indian travel to space was Rakesh Sharma of the Indian Air Force pilot in 1984. He was the part of Soviet Union Soyuz T-11 expedition which was launched on 2nd April 1984. <laughs> Following the completion of Gaganyaan, India intends to launch its own space station for conducting research in fundamental, applied and engineering science. Future rockets will be designed to be reusable. Reusable rockets will cut down the space debris, which is an issue because of the high number of launches and minimize cost and energy use. ISRO is currently working on two reusable program. The first one is Admired Test Vehicle, which is conceived as VTVL, Vertical Takeoff, Vertical Landing. The second is RLVTD program, in which a spacecraft similar to the American Space Shuttle will launch vertically and landed horizontally. The RLVTD successfully completed its first atmospheric test flight on 23rd May 2016, and the final version will take 10 to 15 years. In the race to develop economical and fusion space technology, India are working steadily to master this important technological advancement. India often receives criticism for investing in space projects for its poverty, education, healthcare, and sanitation. Modern day India is characterized by paradoxical circumstances in which large section of society is still largely untouched by modern economy. Unless nations develop their own infrastructure for modern technology, they would either have to live without their benefits or be reliant on the third-party suppliers at the predetermined rate with little or no control over the service quality and availability. A large part of India's problem stems from its flawed administrative system mainly due to corruption. A solution to this problem can be only found by creating jobs, improving infrastructure and advancing technological innovation. Spending on ISRO directly or indirectly contribute to these goals. Space research and program are not a waste of money, but long-term investment have massive returns for the country. But how much does the government spend on the space research from the tax it collects?
in the union budget 2022 to 23 the center allocated 13700 crore to the department of space here is a figure of isro budget over the years as a proportion of gross domestic product however india's space budget is the lowest among the other space power according to economic survey 2021 to 22 the global space economy was close to 447 billion dollar in 2020 of this india share was only 2% much behind the us and china Right from the beginning, the Indian space program was rooted in societal application. Among the first of these was the Indo-US Satellite Instructional Television Experiment Program of 1975 to 1976. A major boost to large-scale application came in 1983 with the launch of InSat series of geostationary satellite. As you can imagine, in the late 1980s, TV broadcasting was limited to only Doordarshan. The service was black and white only. Insert impact on telecommunication, meteorology, broadcasting, search and rescue operation is immense. Color transmission began in 1982 with the Asian Games in New Delhi. Availability of more KUNS band transponders. Insert expanded the spectrum of television option and triggered the creation of television entertainment industry. Direct to home DTS television became real. Television program reached remote corner including the northeastern state and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. In India, fishing is a major source of income for the millions of people. Since 2000, INCOIS has been sending out advisories on potential fishing zone to help fishermen to find fishing ground easily. Videos on the mobile phone app also assist fishers in locating fishing zone. Indian National Center for Ocean Information Service employs satellite technology to locate fishery location where fishermen have the highest chance of getting good catch, cutting search time and conserving fuel and human effort. This is not at all. For a country of 1.4 billion people, almost one third of whom live in coastal areas vulnerable to not just tsunamis but also cyclone and storm surges. For them, early warning system have proven invaluable time and again. During the 1977 cyclone that hit Devi Sima in Andhra Pradesh, more than 10,000 people died due to the lack of warning. Each day, more corpses are coming to light in their hundreds. In addition, over a quarter of a million cattle and buffalo have perished. When cyclone Hudhud hit Andhra Pradesh in 2014, the loss of life was reduced significantly to less than 100 due to the early warning and real-time tracking of cyclone's path. For instance, four days before Filin struck, the area was evacuated, and a staggering 1.2 million people were moved to safer areas. They have successfully evacuated almost nine lakh people and minimized loss of human life during the cyclone. This is one of the largest evacuation operations in the entire country. The devastating effect of Filin caused hundreds of millions of dollar damage and affected the livelihood of millions of people. However, 21 people lost their life as a result of this storm. In the last few decades, ISRO has revolutionized weather reporting, cyclone warning and disaster mitigation using InSat and Earth observation satellite. Indian Meteorological Department has improved its monsoon forecast and daily weather bulletins. While media at home heaped praises at the agency for saving thousands of lives, WMO and World Bank openly acknowledged its role in averting a disaster of this scale. For the first time, IMD received a national award from Indian Institute of Management for effectively averting a disaster. Following the 2004 Sumatra earthquake and resulting in the deadly tsunami, the Indian government planned to establish an early warning center for tsunamis and a storm surge in the Indian Ocean area. Thus, on 15 October 2007, Department of Science and Technology, Department of Space, and Council for Scientific and Industrial Research collaborated with IUNCIS to establish a center housing for Indian tsunami early warning system. By 2012, it has started to give round-the-clock alert. an advisory service to all indian ocean rim countries the tsunami warning centers now receive data from the 17 seismic stations operated by indian meteorological department
The Indian Tsunami Early Warning System comprises of the state-of-the-art 24-7 operational warning center with the real-time observing network of seismic stations, tsunami buoys and tide gauges to detect tsunami-genic earthquakes and monitor sea level changes, backed up by a large database of pre-run model scenarios, robust standard operating procedure and up-to-date communication systems to generate and disseminate timely bulletins. One of the most impactful grassroots application of space technology is remote sensing satellite program. Launched in 1988, the IRS Indian Remote Sensing Group of Earth and Resource Imaging Satellite generated a wealth of visual data about a country resources. Project Bhuvan, ISRO Bay based utility portal launched in 2009, give thematic maps, data on agriculture, water resource, land cover, and so on. The platform allows government to host geospatial data for public consumption. You can access data on everything from cultural sites to highway to disaster management. Of all modern space-based service, navigation satellite had touched the life of most of the people on the planet even if they may not be directly aware of it. Financial service, military, aviation, transport and more are dependent on super accurate GPS timing signals. India now has a functioning regional navigation satellite service initially called Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System but renamed to NAVIC in 2016. NAVIC will provide two types of service, a standard positioning service which is provided to all users and restricted service which is provided only to authorized users. An independent regional navigation satellite system developed by ISRO whose primary service area extends up to 1,500 km from India's border. In order to keep an eye on crop condition, authorities rely on satellite technology for fast and accurate data collection. With digital data, crop types, area estimates, conditions, damage and growth can be analyzed in real time. Malanobis National Crop Forecast Center was established in 2012. ISRO developed state-of-the-art techniques and methodologies for providing in-season crop forecast and draft assessment. The department is using space technology for programs such as the fossil program where MNCFC regularly generate crop forecast at district, state or national level for nine major crops of the country. Whereas the Chaman project carry out the mapping of the area and output of seven horticultural crops in 12 states. Under the NADMAS project, agricultural draft assessment and monitoring are carried out using numerous satellite data, rainfall, soil moisture index, potential sowing area, irrigation percentage, and ground observation. You can visit MNCFC website to know ongoing project. ISRO is actively involved in promoting science and encouraging students to dream big about applying science to improve society. It has reignited youth enthusiasm in space and creatively engaged young brains. At another level, it has catalyzed number of startups contributing to the various aspects of space technology. ISRO is doing outstanding job on all fronts as everyone can see. However, what is mostly unknown is that it can also generate sizable revenue and that too in foreign currencies. According to government, Indian Space Research Organization has earned foreign exchange revenue of about 35 million US dollars and 10 million euros during the last three years of 2019 to 2021 through the launching of satellites of various private and international agencies. Antrix Corporation Limited, which is the commercial and marketing arm of the ISRO, promotes its product, service and technology. It was incorporated in September 1992. It provides major technical consultancy and transfer technology to industry. It was awarded Mini Ratna Category 1 status by the government in 2008. New Space India Limited NSIL is the new commercial arm of the ISRO. It was established on 6 March 2019 under the administrative control of Department of Space and the Company Act 2013. A public sector enterprise, namely New Space India Limited NSIL, has been incorporated as a new commercial arm of the Department of Space to tap the benefits of the research and development carried out by ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization. To improve uses and maximize advantage from the space assets, it was planned to switch from supply-based model to demand-based model with New Space India Limited acting as an aggregator of customer requirements and obtaining commitments. Space and satellite technology have become invisible backbone of our digital world over the past few decades. More satellite coverage is important because it could open the door to the future solutions, transforming infrastructure, connecting remote areas and much more. ISRO is the strongest factor behind Indian space industry 
the industry is made of more than 500 private suppliers and many other bodies of department of space that deal with business and research since the start of 21st century independent private agency have gathered momentum in 2019 india's space sector accounted for 7 billion dollar or 2% of the global space industry revenue in june 2020 narendra modi cabinet introduced number of measures to deregulate private space sector indian national space promotion and authorization center was also set up to help private firms which are called non government private entities by the department of space private sector ki zaruraton ko suna jaye samjha jaye vyapar ki sambhavnaon ka aakalan kiya jaye iske liye ek mazboot mechanism banaya gaya hai इन स्पेस इस दिशा में प्राइवेट सेक्टर की सभी जरूरतों को पूरा करने के लिए एक सिंगल विंडो इंडिपेंडेंट नोडल एजेंसी के रूप में काम करेगा दिस इज द पार्ट ऑफ द प्लान टू मेक इट इजर फॉर द प्राइवेट सेक्टर टू टेक पार्ट इन ऑल काइंड ऑफ स्पेस एक्टिविटीज द इन स्पेस इनिशिएटिव इज इंडिया न्यू इफर्ट टू ब्रॉडेन द स्कोप ऑफ स्पेस रिसर्च The single window nodal agency works between ISRO and non-government private entities making it easier for them to join India's space exploration projects in consultation with ISRO the center will look the need of private companies and educational institution and find a way to meet those needs India is among a handful of countries with advanced capabilities in the space sector with these reforms the sector will receive new energy and dynamism to help the country leapfrog to the next stage of the space activities